Thank you for viewing this Intergraph Visual Vessel Design short demonstration. Let's go straight into the software and take a look. Let's create a new model and here we can enter in some general vessel identification information and on the next tab we can pick the type of vessel, the design code in use and also the addition of the design code and the vessel orientation, in this case it will be a vertical vessel. And on the next two tabs we can enter in the process data, first of all for the vessel on this tab, including the temperatures and pressures, uh, corrosion allowance and the liquid properties. And on the final tab we can enter in jacket data, although we have no jacket. So now we come to the main shell, first of all the location, and then the general design data which has been pulled through from the wizard when we created the vessel which brings us to tab 3, the shell data. First of all we'll pick a material. The material we want is P235GH so we can search for the material and once we select our selected material the chart is shown and we have various different plots for the various different maximum thicknesses and we can choose a maximum thickness and add it into the current vessel material library so it's available for selection in this particular vessel. Now we can enter in the shell properties. This will be a inside diameter basis and the shell will be 3 meters long and 2.5 meters diameter. The wall thickness will be 10 millimeters which leaves us with the negative tolerance. We can get help on this negative tolerance from the code assistant and as we can see for a class B negative tolerance this should be 0.3 millimeters. The next tab is the data for the stiffening. We can add a shell with or without stiffening rings and then we must specify the unsupported length of the shell. Once again, the code assistant can be used to give us a help here. And this shows for an unsupported cylinder, the length should be the length of the cylinder plus 0.8 times the H factor. For various different heads and various different numbers of stiffeners, BVD calculates, and for an ellipsoidal head, this should be 35 10 millimeters. The analysis shows that that is insufficient we either need to add some stiffeners or increase the thickness and VVD gives us guidance on the minimum values. We can see from the calculation summary and the utilization chart the issue and for external pressure we're using 212% of the capacity. So let's increase the wall thickness to 13 millimeters. Calculate once again. This time we have no errors. Everything is okay and as we can see from the utilization charts we're only using 80% of the component's capacity. This takes us now once on, on saving to the graphics and we can continue. Let's continue by adding the bottom head, an ellipsoidal head. And once again we go through the steps similar to the shell. First of all the component location and attachment and then the general design data again pulled through from the wizard. Now we can specify the dimensions of this end. The diameter and so on are pulled through from the component which we are attached to. We just enter in the thickness and the length of the cylindrical flange of the end. Next the material will be the same, are there any nozzles in the knuckles? And then the analysis shows us that once again we're not thick enough with a 10mm thickness. Again the utilization chart shows us for internal pressure this time we're 111%, so we need to increase the thickness, which will increase to 12 millimeters. Calculate once more, and now we're below 100% of the utilization. We can hit save, and again return to the graphics, and we see the head. Let's now add the conical section. As before, we step through the screens. First of all, where are we attaching the cone to? And then the general design data. And then we can enter in the data for the cone itself. We will enter in the total length of the conical section, which will be 1.5 meters. 
and also the thickness of the cone. A lot of the data has come, as you see, from the component that we're connected to. First we have the shell at the large base and then the data for the shell at the small base. The large base shell already exists so that data is automatically populated and now we can enter in some data for the other shell at the small end of the cone. There will be no stiffening rings on this cone and our calculation summary indicates that everything is acceptable. And here is the cone. Now let's add the shell on the top of the cone at the small end. Once again, step through the screens, we're connected to the conical section at the top of the cone. And then we come to the shell data. This is a 3 meter long shell, 10 millimeters thick. And we will split the shell into two courses and include the welding information, which is on the next screen. Each course will be 1.5 meters and we have a weld at 0 degrees and another weld at 30 degrees on the top course. Now we hit calculate, again no issues, thickness is acceptable and the utilization chart confirms this. Now we can see the top strake in the graphics and as we can also see the welding information. Here we have the welds for the two courses at 0 and 30 degrees. Let's finish off by adding the top head attached to the top strake at the top end, 7.5 meters up. General design data and the dimensions of the end we will just decrease the thickness to 10 millimeters and the material is the same, there are no nozzles in the knuckle region and the calculation summary shows us everything is okay. Now let's add some details. We'll start with the inlet nozzle, which will be on the top head, in the center of the head. And this will be a nozzle with a standard ASME or DIN flange attachment. Attached to the shell, the shell data is confirmed to us here, obtained from the connecting component. Select the material, seamless pipe, and then choose the type of nozzle dimensional data. For the damage of the nozzle we can look that up from the library. We will look to the EN library for seamless tubes. And this will be a 350 nominal size PN10 nozzle, 10 millimeters thick. Then entering the nozzle standout, again we can look this up from the database. The next tab is the flange data. This will be a DN, DIN flange PN10 raised face weld neck. Now we specify the welding data. Reinforcement, there is no reinforcement here. And no reduction to the reinforcement limits. And the calculation shows everything is okay. As does the utilization chart. Hit save and once again return to the graphics and we can see the nozzle. So let's add the second nozzle, the outlet nozzle and the outlet nozzle will be identical to the inlet nozzle so we can just pull the component dimensions from the in inlet nozzle. The only thing we need to change is the attachment this time to the cylindrical shell. Move it into the position one meter up and 90 degrees around the vessel. We can go straight to the calculation, but we fail the area replacement calculation, as you can see from the utilization chart. So we can go straight to the reinforcement, add in a single reinforcing pad, 10 millimeters thick and 50 millimeters wide. Calculate once more, and now we're acceptable. And there we can see the nozzle, and we can see the reinforcement pad shown in blue when we zoom in. Next we will add a platform and a ladder. First of all we will add the platform. We will disconnect the platform from the process card 
and um, we'll also include in the empty weight of the vessel and now all that's left to do is enter in the dimensions including the elevation and uh, angles of the platform the graphic at the bottom of the screen helps and uh, shows you what the data you are actually entering in relates to after entering the dimensions hit the save button and there we see the platform so now let's add on the ladder once again very very easy select the type of component in this case ladder and enter in the ladder dimensions and location information and saving once again there we see the ladder if we orient around the vessel we can view the ladder more clearly now let's finish off by adding in the skirt which will be our final component let's connect the skirt to the bottom of the main shell and the skirt will be two meters long then we can enter in the skirt diameters both at the top and bottom which will be the same 2.5 meters next the general load data here we've only got wind loading this will be to the EN wind code we can also add seismic, acceleration or blast loading next we get a list of the external load bearing components and any design loads such as nozzle loadings which we don't have here then we come to the load cases we only have wind loading and then the load case factors for the various load cases any openings can be added to the skirt here we just have a manway vessel data comes from the main vessel itself and now we specify the anchor bolt data we have 12 bolts and we'll look up the bolts from the database which will compute the effective bolt area for us now we need to select a bolting material select it from the material library as the previous material was at the start of the demonstration and now for this data for the skirt base we'll just click the suggested dimensions for the base and then hit next to start the calculation which takes a second and here we have a note to say that the, pl the platform limits are higher than the vessel but that's okay so we can save and there we see the skirt shown and that's our completed vessel